Welcome back everybody to another Swift programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to go over the for each function. For each is very similar to a for in loop and as always one of the best ways to understand how something works is to go over some examples. So let's jump right in. Let's go ahead and create an array Now, to loop through or over this array with a for in loop, we would use code like this. Let's go ahead and run it. And we can see down here in the console, we get each element of this array. To do the same thing using the for each function, we can reference our array, then we're gonna use a dot for each, let's go ahead and get rid of the round brackets and let's use a closure. Now, let's say x in, let's use a print to display, and we're going to display x. So let's go over this code just a little bit more. As we mentioned, we're going to reference our array. To use the for each function or method, we use a dot, we type out for each, and in this case, we're using our closure. So this x is similar to a parameter or an argument in a normal function. Then we say in, and what comes after the in is how we want to use this argument. Okay, so in this case, x represents each element of this array. So we're using the variable x, and we're just going to use a print to display x, which is each element of the array. So let's go ahead and comment this out. Then let's go ahead and run this code here. Okay, so you can see down here in the console, we get the same output using the for each function or method as we did using the for in loop. A couple notes. You can see the description for the for each function, which reads for each calls the given closure on each element in the sequence in the same order as a for in loop. Now notice here, there are a few differences when you compare the for each function or method to a for in loop. So just be aware of that. Next up, let's go over an example using for each with a range. So let's go ahead and use an array. Let's put in our range, one through 10. Then we're going to use a dot for each. Let's use our closure, x in, and let's just go ahead and use a print to display each element in our range, one through 10. Let's run it. And you can see we get one through 10. Next up, let's use for each to append elements to an array. The first thing we want to do is create our array. Now let's create an empty array. Let's go ahead and reference our array to dot for each. Let's use our closure. We're going to say x in. Now let's use our empty array three, append. And in this case, instead of just appending each element, let's go ahead and append each element multiplied by two. Finally, let's use a print to display the new contents of array three, which should be each of these elements here multiplied by two. So we should get two, four, six, eight, ten. And you can see the results here in the console. Next up, let's go over how you can use for each with other functions. Let's go ahead and create array four. In this case, let's go ahead and reference array four. And before we use our for each, let's go ahead and use a filter and we want to filter anything less than five. So we'll say x 
in x less than 5. We can use our for each. We'll say x in. And once again, let's display x multiplied by 2. So you can see we're getting just a little bit fancy here, but we just wanted to show you that there's all kinds of cool things that you can do using the for each with other functions. So in this case, we only want to include these numbers using our filter, and then we want to go ahead and double those numbers using our for each. So our result should be 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see we get what we expected, 2, 4, 6, 8. For our last example, let's use a for each to iterate over a dictionary. Okay, let's go ahead and reference our dictionary one dot. And before we use our for each, let's go ahead and use sorted. So we're going to use sorted by less than. Now, let's use a dot for each. Let's use our closure. And in round brackets, we're going to put in K for key and V for value. In, use a print to display. And we want to display the keys and values. Let's run it. So here we have the keys and values for dictionary one, and you can see those displayed down here in the console. That's all we have for this Swift programming tutorial. We will be doing many more Swift tutorials in the near future. Join us for those, and we'll see you next time.